followed the Awa all the way from the mountains to the sea and here it is heading out to the ocean and I want to introduce you to Robin who is the chair of the Waikanae Estuary Care Group. You care a lot for this area, it's a very special place, quite a different habitat to what we saw up in the hills the other day. Absolutely, it's uh, you know 32 kilometres on and uh, this is where it broadens out and this is where it has to meet the uh, Tasman sea and all that it's going to throw at us so yes it's a, a very interactive space it's not all flowing one way it's going lots of ways all at the same time yeah and sometimes it's hard to remember that a river does make a journey and it changes throughout that journey an estuary very different from the river up in the hills mm. so lots of different birds live down here they do indeed so um here we can see a lot, uh, just, be, just behind us, I'm looking at uh, a lot of the gulls and a lot of shags. At this time of year, it's winter, so it's uh, roosting around, making a lot of noise kind of season that uh, birds do this time of year. But yeah, we would have a resident population of, you know, three or four hundred of seabirds and things that would make this their, their home at this time of year. And it's actually a, a scientific reserve. Tell us about what makes it a reserve. Okay, so scientific reserve is quite um, high in the hierarchy of reserves. Behind us we've got Kapiti Island, which is a nature reserve, which is the highest form. Then we have the Kapiti Marine Reserve, and then a scientific reserve. And they're very different to recreational reserves, um, or, or local reserves, in that their purpose is on a national basis. It's here to prever, uh, preserve soil, fauna and flora for the sake of the nation and to study the effects of it and particularly the effects of change. So we do things here that uh, really involve lots of basic scientific work, counting, recording, trying different approaches because that's, uh, that builds into the whole body of science. And some places you can't do that, but uh, here we can. Yeah, and protecting those unique species that mm. make this place home. It will have changed a lot over the years though. Mm. Yeah, so if I just turn, be, turn behind us and just see in, in the background, the river used to go straight out that way about 30, 40 years ago. There weren't any houses out on that side at all. And uh, yeah, it went, went straight away through. So about another three or four kilometres from what it does today. And in times of high flood, um, they actually cut through where the people are walking down in the end over, over here to, so the waters can rush straight out. And then all this lot dries up. So uh, yeah, it changes depending on, on its seasonality and, and the demands of the population over time. So a very dynamic environment and one that people have changed a lot and you're going to find out how people now are going back to restore it. Thanks Robin. Thank you.